All right, this is a quick video, and we want to find the tension, our compression, and this beam. Now, we could probably just think about if it would be would be compression or tension. We see that we see that it's held here, but B can go out that way or that way. So, what's B most likely to move? Which way is it most likely to move? Well, if you're applying a force Q there, it's most likely, since it's not applying straight down, it's pushing out that way. So then that means this is most likely a tension. There's tension in this beam. So how do we find that? Well, before we get started, let's write out some assumptions. Assumptions. And we're going to assume that it is a rigid body. We're also going to assume that the summation of the forces are equal to zero, and we're going to assume the summation of the moments are equal to zero. So if we analyze this really closely, we would notice that if we went straight down, that this would make a perfect circle, so this would be the same length as this, and the same length of that. So we're going to do the moment around this point. So let's find the moments. So the summation of the moments must equal zero. So Q has some moment, Q, plus a moment of A, oh, the moment of A, plus the moment of B. If we're doing it straight down at this point, then Q is applying pressure straight to this point, so it's not applying it at any perpendicular distance. So Q, or the moment of Q, is actually zero. So that leaves the negative the negative, if we move that over there, the negative moment of A must equal the moment of B. So then what forces of A and forces of B are are causing the moments? So A's moment is due to whatever force is perpendicular to this distance. So we have distance. Actually, these are the same distance. So really this is a negative distance since it's this way. So we have A has some component AY that's going upwards. So it would be the negative AY times the negative distance. And that must equal that must equals whatever whatever force is coming through the Y component of whatever force is coming through this beam. So the Y for, component of whatever force is coming through that beam, so we're gonna say BY times times d. And if we do a little bit of math, we see that ay d equals by d, and divide by d, we get ay is equal to by. So ay is equal to by. So let's just put that up here somewhere. ay is equal to by. So now, let's do the summation of the forces. Summation, let me erase all this. Summation of the forces. Summation of the forces must equal zero. So Q plus A plus B must equal zero. Q is going down, so it's actually negative, so let's put a negative sign there. So then if we put that over there, we could actually just get Q is equal to A plus B. So, so now that we know that, and if we look at Q, we know that Q is completely Y. There is no X component of Q. So QX is zero. So if we did the summation of the forces in the Y direction, we get zero is equal to QY plus AY plus by, and that's negative again, so we'll do a little bit of rearrangement, qy is equal to ay plus by, and we know that ay is equal to by, so then qy is equal to ay plus ay, so then qy is equal to just, is equal to just, um, uh, 2 ay divided by 2, so then Ay is equal to half of what Qy is. 
half of what QY is. So now we know what AY is. AY. Now we're going to use the principle of, or just knowing that it's a rigid body. Now if we know if something's rigid, we can actually just pretend that these beams are actually straight lines. We can actually pretend these beams are straight just because it's rigid. In the real world, we can't, but since we're doing statics and we can pretend that they're rigid, we can make them straight lines. So again, remember that this distance is equal to that distance. That's a 90 degree angle. This is, and that would be a 45 degree angle. All these would be 45s. So then if A is applied on this beam, A, it has a Y component, so some AY component that's going straight up, AY, and some AX component, AX. And B is the same thing. B is on this part right here. <laughs> that's really bad. B. And it has some BY and and <laughs> wow, that's really bad. BX. So if this is a 45 degree angle, that means this is a 45 degree angle. So that means AY, AY is equal to AX, and BY is equal to BX. Now notice what what's really important is that we're not talking about the force that's going straight down. We're not talking about this force. We're talking about the forces within this curve. So we're just looking at looking at that curve. So then there's some there's some force Q coming in down this beam, Q, and B is applying some force that way. So then the X component of B is coming from the tension within this beam, and the Y component of B is coming from the force that is normal to what it's sitting on. It's from the rocker. And we can now find the tension because the tension is what's providing BX. BX. Because we have so BX. So let's just erase that. B is going, B is applying some force that way. Some force that way, B. The rocker provides the Y component of B. The rocker provides the Y component of B. B, Y. And this beam provides the X component of B. The X component. B, X. So if we know what X, B, X is, then we know the tension within this beam, and BX, which is equal to BY, which is equal to AY, which is equal to QY over 2. And if we remember that Q is going straight down, so then it is equal to QY because there is no QX. QX is 0. So then the tension within the beam is just equal to Q over 2.